I hear your notes for the last section, 3.1.1F. So again, the, the general form we're using is y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. And the way we're going to see the uh, dilation is through the a value. So the a value is the number that's in front of the absolute value bars. So our example number one, our a value is 6. Therefore, our scale factor is 6. And that number is bigger than 1, so it has a vertical stretch. Example two, our A value can be seen right here. It's 1 half. So our scale factor is 1 half. Therefore, it has a vertical compression. It's going to be a fatter V. Example three, our A value is negative 4. But we're going to say our scale factor is 4. The negative sign tells us that it reflects over the x-axis, so we know that it's going to open down. The scale factor is actually 4, and this one will have a vertical stretch. And our last example, y equals negative 2 thirds, absolute value x minus 4 plus 3. The a value is negative 3. Our scale factor is 2 thirds. Again, that's between 0 and 1, so that means it has a vertical compression. All right. I want to look at some graphs um, now and figure out the A value, figure out if it's a dilation of a stretch or dilation of a compression. So the red graph here is the parent graph. So that's just Y equals absolute value of X. So by just looking at the graph, we know this is going to be a dilation and it's going to be a stretch. But how are we going to figure out the, the scale factor? So the, way, the best way to do it is to look at the slope value. So this one, uh, we know the parent graph, I go up one over one. Um, so that's a slope of one here. But what happens on my blue one here, the dilated one, I go up four over one. So this is, means my slope is four. And so my A value is four. And it's positive because this is opening up. And that's the same as my scale factor. So my scale factor is also four. All right, let's look at another one. How about this one? So the blue one is my new my new figure. So that dilation is going to be a compression. Now this one's a little bit harder to see. Um, if I go up, how much? And I go over. It's hard to read. I can read this one because I have it set up, and so I can see I go up one fifth and over one. So my A value is actually one-fifth, one over five. But if I couldn't see it that way, I could look at this. I go up one, and I run all the way over here to five. You see that? Remember this from your high in one days looking at slopes, right? We rise one, and we run five. So that's my A value. It's one-fifth. I know it's positive because it is opening up, so that's my scale factor as well. One fifth. All right, let's look at a couple of graphs now that it actually open down. All right, so on this one, um, I'm going down, looks like six and over one. So I go down six over one. So I know my A value, this opens down. So I know my A value is negative six. Right. And if I had looked at the slope of this side and the left side instead, this right here, my slope would have been positive six. I would still would have known my a value is negative six because this v opens down. So my a value is negative six. I know my scale factor is actually just positive six. So that is definitely stretched. All right. One more example. All right. This one. Let's see, again, it's kind of hard for me to see how much I go down when I go over one. Um, so let's go ahead and say I go down one and I go over here three to the right. So if I did a little slope triangle here. There's one, three. So it's one over three. And since, and this opens down, so my A value is going to be negative one third. That's my A value, and my scale factor is just one third. All right, so that's how you can see the A value or the dilation value in the, the graph. You think about slope, and we just know 
We don't care if the slope's positive or negative. If, if the V opens up, we know the A value is positive. If the V opens down, we know the A value is negative.